The Holy Roman Empire has always been defined by the power struggles between the territorial princes, the emperor and the pope. Luther's prince was Frederick the Wise, 1463 to 1525. He was one of the princes who pressed Emperor Maximilian I for reforms. He became president of the Council of Regents, an attempt to form an imperial government in which all territorial princes were represented, which means in practice more power to the princes and less to the emperor. Pope Leo X wanted Frederick to become emperor, not because he liked him. The papal delegate called Frederick a fat groundhog, but because Leo thought he would be easier to manipulate than a more powerful prince. But Frederick, being wise, refused the offer and engineered the election of his nephew Charles V, also king of Spain, a real counterweight to the money-grabbing papacy. Prince Frederick founded Wittenberg University, but he never talked to Luther personally. Nevertheless, he protected him from the wrath of the church and the emperor. Because of him, Luther was allowed to defend himself at the Diet of Worms. And when was Luther was declared an outlaw that everybody had to kill on sight, Frederick refused to comply and hit Martin Luther in his Wartburg castle. Frederick had a curious hobby. He collected relics. Relics are remains and artifacts from saints. Altogether, he had 19,000 relics that merited almost 2 million years of, of purgatory. And they included treasures like a thumb from St. Anne, Jesus' grandma, a twig from Moses' burning bush without fire, hay from the holy manger, and even milk from the Virgin Mary. It was very smart of her to bottle some so that few Future generations could venerate these items, for a fee, of course. Collecting relics is a very expensive enterprise, and Frederick had to recoup some of that cost. Due to Frederick's political ability, the emerging Reformation was not crushed, but grew into a force that had a lasting influence on Europe and on the world.